Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies. This week is National Surveyors Week, which aims to educate the public about surveying. Much of the focus is in schools, talking about the profession and getting students excited about a career in surveying. With us today to talk about surveying is Joseph Romano, a principal at Langen Engineering and Environmental Services in the New York City area. Joe is also chair of ACEC's Coalition of Professional Surveyors. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Gar. So the past year has been pretty difficult for everyone. How has the surveying business fared during the pandemic? That's interesting, Jerry. The the uh, industry's done okay. I mean, there's not been a lot of slowdown. You know, uh, we COPS has um, representatives across the nation uh, and members across the nation. We meet and talk once a month, and I would say that. In the beginning, there were some issues, uh, concerns about public work and funding. But if you talk to everybody, everybody has evolved their their work to um, to stay up to uh, the pretty much the normal chargeability numbers and the uh, amount of work that they've had. There's been some projects put on hold due to funding, but in our last call, many of the firms that do public work have a sense that those contracts will be released. Private development um, has not stopped. You've heard about a boom in, in residential, um, some industry and some distribution has, has stayed strong. Um, most firms are uh, either practiced publicly uh, or private uh, and some firms do a mixture of both. Um, so I think it's really where you've targeted, but you know, all in all, I think we've done pretty well as a profession. Uh, during the pandemic. I would imagine one of the big challenges is that being a surveyor, you've got to be on site. So you've got to be out in the world. Was that a challenge for firms uh, given the, the uh, restrictions of the pandemic? Yeah, so yes, yeah, that was that was a challenge early on. You know, it, it, you're right, we are in the field, we're on job sites. Each firm came up with their own uh, restrictions and protocols and then each job site has their own safety and protocols along with the local and state government protocols so keeping track of all that was often an issue um, not something that was couldn't be overcome but it, it, it was an issue um, the hardest part about about it was limitations on meeting in person a lot of firms uh, uh, put a little slowdown or banned on meeting in person which makes it difficult um, travel became an, 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 an issue. Most survey departments use two-man crews. Um, some do one-man crew. Um, traveling together in the close proximity created an issue. So many firms put um, protocols in place where field crews had to travel in separate cars to a job site. Um, a lot of firms also do interstate work, which creates a whole nother issue during the early days of the pandemic with uh, travel bans from state to state and keeping track on them and then quarantining and testing be became an issue. Um, but again, I don't think it was something that was um, uh, too hard to overcome if you tracked it and put some effort into it. Uh, it's interesting. I think the uh, if you talk to the field guys, the hardest thing to overcome was working with a mask and talking on a walkie talkie to each other or yelling across the field with a mask on became a little difficult. <laughs> I think we've all experienced that. So. So with with uh, with National Surveyors Week, you know the uh, the idea is to try to get uh, young people interested in a career in surveying, and and that's been a challenge for the engineering industry for a long time, getting new people into uh, into engineering into the STEM. How, how is that situation with surveying? Wow, that's interesting. You know, I, I I've been doing I've been at Langham forty years and been surveying for like thirty five of those years, and it's always been a, a challenge to find uh, new blood into the industry. And, you know, there's a couple of reasons for that. Many states uh, now require a degree program. Um, and I can tell you, anybody who has high, high school kids probably never even heard of a surveying degree. Um, most people in those programs are uh, people into surveying already and who already have a job and are looking to be able to move to the next uh, step, which is licensure. So the, the degree program has been beneficial in raising the statute, the, the statue of the profession, uh, but it's also hindered a little bit of who can get into it. So I think uh, 
the best thing that we all can do and that many of us do is education uh, at a local high school level and a trade school level and getting out and promote and be active in local societies and national societies and uh, making the, the survey more visible. Um, that's one of the things we try to do at Nash, during National Survey Week. Uh, this week was a little, this year was a little tough as was last year because of the pandemic, but you'll often see surveyors and survey firms donate time and go to a local grammar school or high school or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts and show some of the cool technology. You know, one of the things we have uh, at our fingertips is some of the coolest technology uh, in, in our firms. And uh, we're lucky enough to get to play with all those toys. And, and that can spark some interest. One other thing, some states are going forward with apprenticeship programs. Um, not Some are union-based, some are not union-based. And those apprenticeship programs should help get some new blood into the industry. When you do go into the schools, obviously not this year, but in past years, what has been the reaction of the kids to, to the, is it, a, is it that they don't even, that they didn't even realize this was a potential career? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. I think um, most um, guidance counselors and guidance centers don't promote the, the service, uh, the industry, just because of lack of knowledge. But yeah, a lot of kids are, uh, get intrigued with, um, again, with the technology, the sense of outdoors. Um, you know, people think of the surveyors just outdoors, but there's a really good mixture of, of outdoor work and indoor work. Um, some people are very uh, into the woods and, and being outside and there's a lack of, in the, there's a sense of independence uh, for the field people. There's no one watching over your shoulders. There's a lot of things that are uh, intriguing about the survey profession. What drew you to uh, surveying? Um, some of those things. Some of those, uh, I like the sense of being outside, being on my own. You know, when you're outside, you, 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 you get a scope of services from um, the office or from the project manager. And when you're outside and in, in your first start and you're at a very entry level position, you're really learning and being almost like the gopher, right? But you're out on a different site many times, the different different sites daily or weekly. Um, that's one of my biggest things that I, I enjoyed about being in the field. It's not always the same thing day in and day out behind a desk. Um, it's a different piece of property, a different environment. It could be urban, it could be rural. Um, it could be in another state, another country. Uh, I liked that. That stuff is was one of the things that really intrigued me. And the technology when I started, uh, the technology was just going digital, and uh, the tech the technology was very very uh, in, intriguing to me. As was the history. The history, you know, there's a lot of famous people that were surveyors early on in in the country's uh, uh, history. So some of that and retracing their footsteps intrigued me. Yeah, I guess George Washington started out as a surveyor. Yeah, if, if you ask the question, uh, how many surveyors are on Mount Rushmore? There's three out of four, so it's pretty good. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Who, who would those three be? I will leave that up for our audience to go okay. look. That's fair. Let, let's see. It'll be a little uh, quiz yeah. for them to, to go investigate. And you, the winner gets a drone. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you mentioned that you've been in Langen for 40 years and that there's been a lot of cool technology. What, 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 how has the technology of surveying changed since you started? Wow, that, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, when I started, we just had begun using digital data collectors and total stations, which um, basically removed field notes, right? Everybody used to write stuff down. People still write stuff in field books and, and take notes, but it went totally digital. I would think for the average person that doesn't realize it, GPS is, was one of the largest game changers in what we do. No one, when GPS was, uh, went from military grade to private grade, I don't think anybody envisioned that surveyors would figure out how to use it uh, to measure very accurately, nor did everybody envision it would be in everybody's phone and cars. So GPS was a big, big game changer for the way we work. It allowed, uh, as was the digital transformation, it allowed us to uh, go from a three-man or a four-man crew to a two- or a one-person crew, which impacted 
it did imp it had a positive and a negative impact um impact uh, negative is staffing there's another negative impact with any digital data is that it's harder to check uh do qa qc on and a lot of people just believe oh it's in a computer or it's digital so it must be right um, but technology has certainly put played a role in how we've built our department and uh, all the other surveyors that I, that I know. Uh, are you using drones and LIDAR and all that stuff as well? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, Langen, as well as a, a many other firms in the coalition, um, have a ton of experience in, in LIDAR. So we break LIDAR down into three uh, elements. Static, which is a, a LIDAR system that stays in place and spins. Mobile, which you could put on a car or a vehicle or boat, uh, airborne, either in a drone or a plane. Um, an interesting thing is I was really introduced to ACEC COPS through a scanning organization called the USIBD, and, and we, we signed a, um, an agreement with the coalition to uh, share membership and information. But getting back to your question about LIDAR, um, that's certainly been a game changer in um, in the industry, you know, drones come in all shapes and sizes. And again, it's one of those things that um, beware and do some research because they're not all created equal. Um, we have drones that are good for photography. We have drones that are good for photography to reduce and produce topography and planimetrics. And then we have LIDAR based drones and they're all not the same. And uh, we do a lot of education on that. Um, one of the problems that the industry suffers from is there's a lot of misinformation on the market uh, about these technologies and who can use them, who's trained to use them, um, and who can use them efficiently with the right end in mind is, is critical. So technology, again, that, that's another one that has a double-edged sword for our profession. Sticking on the topic just for a moment longer, though, um, looking ahead, do you, uh, what kind of technology do you envision moving into your, into your field? Um, I think it's going to be about multi-use data. I think it's going to be the ability to acquire data that can be used by multiple people in a project. And later on downstream, we've been talking about that for a long time. Um, there's been some hardware and software acceptance issues, but I think the ability to go out and survey a building or um, use LIDAR to digitally capture, you've heard the, 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 the uh, word digital twin, to capture that information and add attribute data that other people in the building or the design process can use. Um, that's going to be somewhat of a game changer for us. I do think LIDAR is a great tool. It, it, it produces a very heavy file, I think, as photography advances. Um, that'll start replacing some LIDAR or some other means of data capture that doesn't create as heavy or as massive as a uh, uh, file that a scanning system does. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be a big game changer for us. And then looking ahead, it, what's your thoughts on, on surveying as a profession? Is it, is it a growing profession? Is it uh, some, something that someone in school today could look forward to a full career in? Yeah, I think I think it offers a great career. You know, surveying uh, breaks up into many different categories and many different types of surveying. It, you know, there, there's subcategories that fall under surveying. There's people that just do boundary work and there's people that just do topography and there's people that do LIDAR and hydrographic and there's people that do all types of surveying that you wouldn't think of. Um, and in, uh, interesting thing there is that with many of these schools having now having degrees uh, in the upcoming ACEC um, summer meeting, I think, no, the spring meeting, we're going to have a roundtable and we're going to bring in professors and deans from different universities across the country to have a conversation about um, the challenges and the uh, rewards that they see in each of their programs, the successes and the, and the challenges. And uh, if anybody uh, wants this to join in that roundtable, I think it's April 28th. It would be good good to have questions from other people. Um, 
but yeah, to answer your question, I think the career is, um, it, it could provide somebody a very stable career. Uh, the one, one thing again is technology. Technology can replace some of the things that you do, but it cannot replace the education and the institutional and the experience that you gain as a surveyor. Pushing a button is a lot, pushing a button to get two and two is four is a lot different than understanding why two and two is four. Um, and I think as a profession, we need to hold on to those things and promote those things. And um, a little bit of self-advocacy is needed. Uh, and I think uh, we'll be just fine. Well, great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Anytime, Jerry. I think it was, uh, it was really good. Thank you. And we've been talking with Joe Romano, who's a principal at Langan Engineering and Environmental Services in the New York City area. He's also chair of ACC's Coalition of Professional Surveyors. And this has been the Engineering Influence Podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. Thanks for listening.